Hey everybody, today we are playing Coral Canyon Golf Course just outside of St. George, Utah. This golf course opened in 2000 and it is currently 7,200 yards from the tips. And I will say, ever since this opened, this has been one of the top golf destinations in Southern Utah, but it has had its ups and downs. Now, over these past two years, this golf course has made an incredible comeback and we'll talk a little bit more about that in this episode. So keep on watching, but let's get right into the golf. The first hole at Coral Canyon is really considered one of the easiest holes on the golf course. It's a fairly straightaway par 5, a little bit of a turn to the left, but it's up the hill. And you know, really you just got to make sure you don't go left off of this tee box if you can keep it on grass. And then after that, you really just got to make sure that your second shot just doesn't go over the green. Over the green can be really difficult, and a lot of times you'll actually lose your golf ball into the desert over the green. So on this tee shot, I hit it well. I'm still on the grass. However, I kind of hit it a little too far, and I have this ball above my feet lie here. So remind me to never, ever film a golf shot from this angle again, because this might have been the most difficult shot tracer I've ever had to do. So left myself just short of the green and used a little 9 iron here to just kind of bump it up the green, but honestly I really just didn't hit it hard enough at all. It's a pretty significant slope in the middle of this green, so make sure if you've got a back pin, make sure to get it far enough up there, but again, you don't want to go much past this pin because everything will roll back towards the front of the green. Unlike what I did on the first hole, I would recommend trying to make a birdie because the second hole is really one of the more difficult holes on the course in my opinion. It is usually a three shot hole and the people who haven't played here many times will try to go for it in two and really there's just way too much risk and sometimes not enough reward if you do even make it to the green. So. I always just hit this big sweeping cut off of this tee box. It only goes about 260 or 270. It takes a lot of distance off, but I know it's going to take the left side of the desert out of play for me, and usually I can control this one well to keep it in the fairway. It still leaves me with 293 in, but again, I'm usually going to be trying to play this as three shots, if not just barely getting up towards the front of the green. So on the second shot, just make sure you don't go to the left. It's okay if you just push this off a little bit to the right. I pushed mine a little bit too far and I actually hit the cart path here on the fly. Uh, however, that right side and short right, it does have a pretty good bail out area. So I hit the cart path on my second shot and it bounced just short of this bush and I do have to go through a little bit of bush here in order to get to the pin, but I've got a decent look at the flag. It's just a little bit of a downhill pitch shot right out of the dirt. So that was a really good shot from the desert. Just took about one bounce and came to a stop real quick on the green here. So I've got about 18 feet down the hill for my birdie. Should just break a little bit from right to left. Now there's a big hill right behind me on this green and it really covers that back part. So if you have a back pin location, make sure you get your approach shot all the way to the back of the green because if you're putting from the front of the green all the way to the back, uh, a two putt sometimes is nearly impossible with that hill. So make sure you're on the correct side of the green with your approach. This third hole is actually trickier than it looks. It's 177 yards, but I almost always will add an extra five to seven yards to the distance on this hole. Now I'm hitting an eight iron here, which is probably not enough club, but I really want to be careful not to get it up on that top shelf of the green because the pin is just below the top shelf of the green here. And if you do get all the way up to the top, it's going to be an extremely difficult putt coming down the hill to still make your par. Now with that said, I just kind of gave this everything I could and kind of pushed 
pushed it out to the right. So I'm pin high and really not a bad looking chip shot here from the right side of the green. But the biggest thing is I'm just trying my hardest to not give myself a really difficult putt. Now if you're on the correct side of the green, either the front, depending on if the pin is up front or if the pin is in the back you're on the back if you're on that correct portion the putting really is not too difficult so just get it up there close and it can be a very good birdie opportunity for you The green on this fourth hole is actually very close to identical to the green on the pass par three, number three. So you really are gonna wanna make sure that second shot, you stay on the correct part of the green. If the pin is back like it is today, you've gotta get your second shot all the way back because it's a very difficult green to putt on. And you know, this tee shot is really a pretty wide open tee shot. There's just one bunker that you gotta stay a little bit left of. I hit this tee shot right at the bunker and it actually just got a few feet over the bunker. I almost wish I would've made it into the bunker. So I left myself this uphill shot uh, I kind of ball above my feet here I can't see the flag from where I'm hitting here so I would actually recommend driving up to the green before you hit your second shot so you can see where the flag is and how far you're gonna need to hit this next shot but you can see me kind of run up the hill to see where it's landing and I kind of jump up and down like a little kid here because I realize that I just hit maybe my best shot of the day hit about 15 feet back and sorry about the blurry camera but you can see that I spun all the way back to the pin only about two feet now left for my birdie. Number five does require quite a bit of strategy. You gotta be careful at how far you hit this first tee shot. From the back tees, you probably have about 230 at least before you reach the end of the fairway, but I only like to hit this about 210 to 215 at the most, just to make sure I'm safe. And it's just a little five iron that I just poke right out into the fairway uh, and just leave myself a good second shot in. Now, it's easy to get cocky on this hole and just try to take out driver and go for the green. I'll be the first to admit that I have tried to do that many times, especially if I'm not playing in competition but if you go left on this tee shot it is very easy to see a seven eight even a nine on this hole uh, i've actually made a few pretty high numbers on this hole in competition so i've only got about 137 yards here down the hill with the pitching wedge so it does play a little bit short uh, i didn't quite take that in consideration i wanted to maybe even play a 50 degree if i would have done this again uh, so i went just past the flag but spun back a little bit so i've got about a 20 footer down this hill now this green has a ton of break as you're going to see here and I kind of rushed through these two putts and you'll hear why I rushed through in a second uh, but maybe you tell me when you're trying to play through a group or a group is allowing you to play through is this how you would normally handle it because uh, I felt like this was a good way to go they were super nice but uh, I'm glad when people actually are willing to let you play through. Yes, please, thank you. Thank you. All right, so I'm jumping over this other group here on this sixth hole, so I'm kind of trying to play this hole quick as well. Uh, but this is one of the signature holes out here. You'll notice this tee box is in a little bit rough condition, but that's actually because they're trying to extend the tee box right now. So they're kind of putting this hole under construction a little bit, which is great because it's gonna make it a little bit longer par three. So I'm excited to see this hole when it plays just a bit longer than only 120 yards. So this pin is always difficult for me to get to because I do like to spin the ball quite a bit. So most of the time I hit it and it spins all the way back to the front of the green. Where I'm standing here for my putt, I seem to be in that exact same position more often than not, no matter where the pin location is. So. Easy two putt par up the hill for me on this par three though.
For the shorter hitters, number seven is a very difficult hole. For somebody that hits it a little bit longer like myself, it's not tough at all. So I just try to go over those left bunkers and I would be very careful doing that if you can't carry it about 300. So if you're in the bunkers, is really just going to be a chip out because those bunkers are extremely deep and very difficult to even see the flag from there. I did hit a pretty low shot and I didn't make great contact but I carried it just past the bunker and it rolled forever so this is a really good tee shot for me. Now if you remember on number 5 I had downhill 137 yard pitching wedge and now I've got an uphill barely uphill 127 and I still hit my pitching wedge for some reason which doesn't make any sense I should have hit a 50 degree here and I was thinking about that while the ball was in the air I had a feeling this was gonna go long because I really hit it right at the flag stick and with a 50 degree this probably could have been really close and give myself a good birdie opportunity so I'm just doing a little bump and run here for my birdie chip Number eight is a pretty drivable par four for most tee boxes. I can drive this green pretty easily. However, there is a lot of trouble, especially if you fade it off to the right. And that is usually my miss with the driver. So a lot of times I'll just hit an iron out here from the blue and white tee box. I can get there with this one iron, but from back here, I'm still gonna have a good 50 to 60 yards into the green. Now you wanna be careful going right. Those rocks up on that hill are not fun to hit out of. So a drive is fine. However, for the most part, there's no nothing wrong with just laying up short of those bunkers now i will say i would love to see a gigantic bunker put right kind of where my ball is right here i think a big bunker on the right side of this green kind of in this collection area would be a good way to make people stay a little bit short of the bunkers rather than just trying to go for the green with their longest club all day long so not a bad chip. There's a big ridge kind of in the middle that takes all the balls to the left. Uh, and then of course, if you've got that right pin location, make sure you keep it up right of that ridge. So just got a little bit of a, probably 11 to 12 feet at the most for my birdie putt. And I left it on the low side here. I hit a good putt, but I should have just read that a little bit bigger break because uh, that should have been a pretty, pretty good chance at a birdie if I would have just left it on the high side. So number nine is one of the best golf holes, if not the best golf goal in my opinion, on all of Coral Canyon. It's a par four and if you go left, you're in big trouble. You're in a canyon that really you just don't even wanna try to find your golf ball down there. And then you gotta be careful not to go through the fairway. So in my opinion, from the back tee boxes, it's actually easier back here than it is to play from the white tee boxes because from the white tee boxes for me, I'll even try to go closer to the green. And uh, sometimes that temptation will lead to me pulling it into the canyon or just hitting it a little bit too far and going all the way through the fairway. So I aim for that big green circle right in the middle. And once again, you've got a two tiered green, lots of two tiered greens out here at Coral Canyon. And I hit this 50 degree right at the flag. It was looking really good, but I ended up coming about five feet short of where I needed to be. So I've still got about a 25 footer now up the hill to the flag. Now just check out this backdrop here on this hole such a cool front nine and there's a lot more views just like this and a few bigger elevation changes on the back nine as well so such a good golf course and honestly i could not have said that about two to three years ago if you've played here sometime say three to seven years ago you probably were saying that this course is in pretty terrible condition and you know what it really was but they have a new course superintendent his name is josh kent and he has really taken this golf course from being one of the worst golf course conditions in all of southern utah to now being really one of the best so he along with the general manager marco leone who was here for a while then he left and they've brought him back they've really made this one of the best places to play they usually have really good prices and a lot of the times you can find deals where their rounds can even come with lunch or a sleeve of golf balls or something as well so get out to coral canyon because right now it's one of the best that you could possibly play in southern utah so pretty good front nine for me one under par eight pars and one birdie so no bogeys at all and you know i will just throw this out there hopefully not to jinx it but i still to this day have never had a bogey free round of golf in my entire life i've shot seven under par and i've shot five under par quite a few times in my life but i still have never had a full round of golf with zero bogeys so hopefully that happens at some point on this channel 
getting into the back nine, you just start with a really straightaway, very simple par four. Uh, I see this as a birdie hole more often than not. Uh, it is a pretty wide open fairway, and if you play it even towards those bunkers, if not just a little bit right of those bunkers on the left, a lot of times you're going to kick right into the middle. So from the blue and white tee boxes, it actually could be nearly drivable uh, if you're able to just get a little bit of good distance on it. So easy drive for me here just right in the middle and it's just going to leave me a pit shot up over that bunker just short of the green uh, up to a, again a pretty fair green that's pretty easy to read it's back to front but nothing too significant All right, so that got me down to two under par now, and we've got a cool par three coming up. So again, it's kind of an island green in a way. However, the biggest thing here is you just gotta be careful of missing to the green to the right. So if you go right, especially if you go right over that bunker on the front right of the green, you can roll down all the way down to that 17th green, uh, which is a really difficult shot all the way up. Unfortunately on this tee shot here, I just pulled it straight left really bad shot uh, I pulled it straight left into that bunker so now I've got a downhill tough bunker shot uh, to even get this close and again as I said a couple holes ago I am trying to have my first bogey free round ever and now I've got a really difficult uh, up and down that I've got to make from this bunker All right, really good bunker shot there. Just left me a nice little uphiller for my tap and par to stay on that bogey free train today. Hole number 12, uh, it can be a pretty long hole, even though it's just 433. A lot of the times you're only gonna be able to hit this first shot about 250. You don't wanna go through the whole fairway here and go into that big wash. So I usually just hit an iron about 250. I actually hit this one a little bit fat. So this one actually only went about 210. Uh, but I'm right in the middle of the fairway luckily and I'm still going to have 216 into this hole. Now the biggest thing on this second shot is make sure to stay right of the hole. Uh, left of this green is not good. Right is a pretty decent bailout area. Bad luck just seeing a thing like that. Well, that was by far my worst shot of the day so far. I actually left this still short of the bunker that is quite a bit short of the green. So I've got a downhill lie. It didn't even roll all the way into the bunker. So still got about 45 yards downhill lie with a 62 degree to chip over this bunker and onto the green. Uh, and not a terrible shot. I just It's hard to really judge the distance on that downhill lie with so much loft. Uh, so I'm going to still leave myself a good 20 feet up the hill to stay on this bogey free train.
Well, I guess today is not the day for my first ever bogey free round. My goal here before the end of the year is to hopefully be able to get that bogey free round. Uh, that's just the one thing I'm still really going for right now. Now, number 13, on the scorecard, it says it can actually play 269. Uh, I don't know if it still is able to play that far. I know they've moved this tee box up a little bit, but it's 226 today to that back flag. And I hit a four iron here, and honestly, I hit this pretty good. I hit it right at the flag, and I was wondering where it'd be. I couldn't quite see the pin from there, so I got up to the green and realized I was short, and I'm still just on the front of the green. So it's a long birdie putt here, and this breaks significantly. So as you can see here, it breaks big time right to left, and then starts rolling even more past that hole. So I still got about seven to eight feet just to save my par and avoid being that guy who goes back to back on the bogeys after having a great first 11 holes. Number 14 is a 616 yard par 5, but honestly from the back tees, just swing away and hit it as hard as you possibly can. Uh, it's pretty wide open, there's a couple bunkers, but if you're playing these back tees, you should be able to carry those bunkers anyways. So I just hit this one as hard as I possibly could. It's a 616 yard par 5, ends up actually being uphill as well, but more often than not you actually do have a chance of getting to the green in 2 here. So 254 yards left, so I actually hit that drive just over 360 yards, so one of the better drives of the day for me. I've got a 3-iron here, and I'm sorry that I cut the camera so quickly after this shot, but uh, either way, I hit 3-iron up the hill and hit this really well, 250 yards up the hill. Just pulled it a little bit to the left, but left is okay. Right, it's really easy to lose your golf ball, so I'm pin high here, just left of the green, and really this is a straightforward chip. Again, you've got a two-tiered green, so if your pin is on the front of the green, make sure you stay short of that ridge in the middle of the green. If it is a back pin, just make sure you get all the way up there, because putting can be really tough if you're not on the correct side. Luckily now, I just have a little tap-in birdie to get myself back to two under par after I made that bogey on number 12. 15 is such a good golf hole, 505 yard par 4, and sometimes this plays into the wind as well, so this can be a really difficult hole. Now, I, I usually like to just hit a little bit of a cut, not a major cut off of this one, uh, but I do like to hit a little bit of cut to just kind of keep it straight. you got to be careful that you don't push this too far right, so I like to start this off a little bit further left. Now, this was a good drive for me. It uh, left me with just the 7 iron into this hole. So 180 yards in, and uh, from here, the biggest thing with this green is if you're left of the green, uh, it'll actually kick down the hill and sometimes go all the way into the desert. And it's the same if you're over the green. So sometimes short or just short right is the best place to be if you're going to miss anywhere. Uh, I took this iron shot pretty much right at it and came up just short, just barely short of the green, and just left of the flag. Number 16 for me, in all honesty, is more of a birdie hole than even number one. So number 16 is a decently short par five, and depending on how good a drive you hit, there's really no reason at all that you shouldn't be able to reach the green pretty easily in two. Uh, I actually, this was one of my worst drives of the day. I kind of pull hooked it, and uh, honestly, if I would have hooked this a little bit more, even another five yards to the left, it actually would have gone all the way into the desert. So I got a little bit lucky uh, that I didn't go too much further left than I did here. I've still got about 250 yards with the three iron, and I will say I hit this three iron really, really well, and it was right at the bin. So right at the flag, but did come up a little bit short, so maybe just needed a little bit more club 
on that shot to get it all the way back to this whole location. So just a long putt, and this green will break pretty significantly from right to left. Uh, and you got to be careful. Again, if you've got that right pin location, it's a pretty small little landing area there to keep it to the right of that hole. All right, easy birdie there on number 16, which it really should be. It's, in my opinion, probably the easiest hole on the golf course. Now, I'm down to 300 par here, and we've got a 203-yard par 3. Uh, so I always play this hole right at the yardage. I don't really add any elevation up or down on this. I pretty much play it right at that 200-yard uh, mark. And sure enough, I hit my 6-iron here just right of the flag. And check out with the zoomed-in action of what happens when I hit the green. So there you go. It hits the green, doesn't even move, and uh, plugged right in its ball mark. So I've got only about seven or eight feet here for my birdie, which it does break quite a bit to the left. But uh, I will say, now that I'm three under par, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, oh, okay, well, great. I can make a birdie here and then get to four under par, have a par five coming up next, maybe eagle that, get down to six under par. And unfortunately, that's all I've got going through my mind, and I don't think about this putt. So don't watch this putt. It's not pretty. Yeah, never ideal to uh, miss a short birdie putt like that, two to three inches to the low side of the hole. So not a great putt, but I'm still three under par with a par five coming up on number 18. So this is just a straight uphill par five. It's 555 and it is reachable in two, but not easily. And a lot of the times it's not even worth it to really go for it in two. So the first thing is just keep it in the fairway. It's a pretty narrow fairway. So again, I like to play my cut. Anytime I get these narrow holes, I hit my little cut and I kind of take that left side of the course out of play. And so sure enough, I hit this well right in the middle of the fairway. And now I've got 268 up the hill with my one iron. So I'm playing this about 280, maybe even a little bit more, and just kind of just seeing if I could smoke a one iron all the way up the hill and see how close I can get to the green. So I hit that well, it was just a little bit right of the green, but that's fine. That's where you want to miss. Much better to miss right on this green than it is to miss left. Uh, but you've got a huge hill in the middle of this green, so I've got a back flag. Make sure you stay on that back ridge. I was a little scared of that ridge, so I pushed it right here on this chip. Not a good chip at all. Uh, so I've got a tough downhill putt to get to four under par on my day. So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. Great birdie on the 18th hole to finish at four under on the day, 68. Really good round for me. Uh, I shot a 69 on this course the last time I played, but that was from the white tees, so one shot better from the blacks today. Now, with that said, uh, I will say the 74.2 rating on this golf course from the blacks is way too high this golf course is probably more like a 72.6 maybe 73 at the absolute most so this 68 that i shot today actually is a minus 5.2 for me on my handicap so that is going to make my handicap drop significantly so here are my final YouTube career stats. I've only had two rounds so far. I did the Sand Hollow Championship course. If you haven't seen that video, go back and watch that video right now. I'll leave that link in the description. But here are my stats so far. I'm just going to keep these stats rolling for all the courses that I play on this channel. And we are going to be playing Copper Rock uh, next. And you'll see that video next Sunday. Thanks so much for watching.